The first mistake you do not want to commit in Diamond Dynasty is jumping straight into Diamond Dynasty in general. You want to go into your settings and you want to optimize your settings to your liking. You want to make sure the gameplay is where it's at, presentation, audio slash video, and most specific. If you're going to be someone that is new to MLB The Show and you want the best settings possible, we will have a video out on that as well. Now after you do that, you do not want to make the mistake of entering Diamond Dynasty and instantly looking to play either any of these single player modes or any of these online modes either you do not want to do that i would highly suggest for this step right here for you to go ahead and either get a notepad feature on your phone get a handy notebook next to you or get an excel sheet on your computer whether you're using google docs or whatever it is once you do that you're going to want to jump into the inning program inside the inning program you will see two tasks you will see daily missions which are missions that you will have for 24 hours or until you complete them once you complete them in 24 hours they will refresh and these missions are essential to leveling up during the first couple of days inside any program whatsoever so you will want to write down what the missions are and you will want to complete them as soon as possible because it allows you to level up as soon as possible inside the inning program as well therefore allowing you to unlock rewards and some of these rewards might be the program boss that initially sells for a ton so you're going to want to make sure you're one of the first ones to do that the same thing goes for missions you will have online missions and you will also have offline missions you want to write them all down and you want to make sure that whatever the mission is, you put the category in it as well. So if it's online, make sure you put online. And if it's offline, make sure you put offline. Some of the offline missions you are able to complete online as well, but none of the online required missions are you able to complete offline. And if it says something like extra innings where it's highlighted, that means you must do it inside that game mode. There is no other game mode possible for you to do it. So make sure you are instantly going into your inning program and seeing the missions required for the inning program then you want to go ahead and jump to team affinity team affinity season one we have seen a bunch of these 90 overall cards that has a lot of people excited well guess what inside each team affinity there is going to be missions for you to do as well you want to write down which ones are repeatable which ones are required for online and then you want to write down the other missions that you need and unlike the others these are required to be completed with certain players. The certain players that you get are either gonna be specific to that team's division, or there are going to be players that you get from packs that you unlock as you accumulate points within that program. So you're gonna want to write down each and every single player and what it is that's necessary in order to accumulate more points that way you don't have to be jumping back into the player programs every two seconds to build a team that's going to be the most effective in terms of grinding everything out in the game as soon as possible you're going to be able to just look at your notepad look at your excel sheet and say okay i'm building a team exactly like this because this is exactly what i need at that point and then even when it comes down to the collections you want to go ahead and take a look at that but before we jump into that the player programs they usually have a starter player program and in the starter player program there are going to be missions to do so write down those missions as well so you know hey i'm working towards something every single time and you're going to be unlocking goodies along the way as well so why not go ahead and knock yourself out now as we continue right here, there is something also called collections and there are starter collections. I would highly suggest not locking in anything at the beginning of MLB The Show 22, unless you are looking to be the first one to discover a certain team's diamond player or a certain division's diamond player or even the league's diamond player. I would highly suggest not locking in anything in the beginning of the game cycle unless it's offering experience as a reward. If it's offering stubs as a reward, I would highly suggest not locking it in because once you collect an item, you can no longer quick sell it, which is selling it to the CPU at a fixed price, and you can no longer sell it in the community market at a price competitive to other users. So collections, you don't want to do it in the beginning of the game cycle and 
when you're doing collections when you finally select to do collections you do not want to use the feature auto select you want to manually go ahead and select which uniforms or whatever collection it is that you're doing that you want to keep forever because sometimes they will auto select the first five for example and this common right here might be selling for 1000 stubs day one two and three and then day seven and eight it might be selling for five stubs but you missed out on the opportunity of making 995 stubs because you decided to go ahead and collect it on the first day so do not go ahead and complete any collections on the first day or collect any players on the first day either i'm not trying to have them take advantage of you so another mistake that you don't want to do when it comes to buying or selling cards is either buying the card strictly at the buy now price or selling the card strictly at the sell now price and i'll explain why so when you go to the buy now price you are buying it at 280,000 stubs right but if you were to create a buy order, what you are looking to do whenever you are creating a buy order is buy that player, of course. So buy orders are on the right hand side. It might sound a little confusing, but just hear me out on this. Buy orders are on the right hand side. So whoever wants to buy this player, they put in a listing and it will go on the right hand side. If your listing is the highest offer, it will be the first one to appear. So if we wanted our listing to be the highest offer for this Albert Pujols, we would put in 195,000 stubs and one just to be the first ones. Now, if they do go ahead and sell this Albert Pujols now, if someone has it and they want to sell it at the highest listing of someone looking to buy it they would instantly sell it to me for 195,000 one stub now with that being said isn't that a humongous difference as i just bought him even though i didn't need him for 195,000 instead of buying him for 280,000 stubs i literally just saved 85,000 stubs 84,999 stubs to be exact but i just saved out on a ton of stubs so always look to create a buy order and just outbid the top listing on the sellable side by one in order to have your listing be the first one and then if i'm looking to sell them right i don't want to sell him to the first one looking to buy him at 191,000 stubs because I'm trying to maximize the amount of profit I can make. So I'm looking to create a sell order and I'm looking to now undercut the buy side by one. So here we would put 281,994 and now my listing is going to be the first one. So whenever someone is looking to buy this Albert Pujols, they will select my listing first if they do not want to create a buy order and just outright buy him because if you create a buy order or a sell order, you're going to have to wait until that order is fulfilled. So whenever someone is looking to buy him outright they're gonna see my listing first now this is going to be competitive because it's an online market so there are going to be people either outbidding you or undercutting you and buy more than one stub which is going to be traumatizing at times looking at the amount of stubs you would lose if you continue the war of undercutting so sometimes it's just best to let it be and just go ahead and do something else with that being said i do not want you to make the mistake of quick selling your cards either listen to me and listen to me carefully a diamond no matter the overall of the diamond will always have a quick sell value of 5k stubs you are not selling it to another player inside the community marketplace so there is no 10 percent cut that the community marketplace takes a diamond quick sold is sold to the cpu for a fixed price so it's going to be 5k stubs no matter the overall a gold will always be 1k stubs no matter the overall a silver will always be 100 stubs no matter the overall bronze 25 stubs and then last but not least a common five stubs so a rule of thumb is if you see for example a sell now for under 5k stubs and i would go as far as to saying for under 5.5k stubs because 10% of 5.5k is going to be 500 which means you only end up making 5k stubs which would have been the price you would have gotten at the end of the day if you would have quick sold them if you do not see the sell now value above let's say 5.6k stubs I would not sell that diamond through the community marketplace. I would just go ahead and quick sell them because it will save you time and effort. If you see it for anything below 5k stubs,
stubs, do not even bother selling it because you are getting ripped off completely. The same thing goes for a gold. If you see a gold, I'm not sure if at this time there are any, but if you see a gold selling in the sell now for under 1k stubs, under 1.1k stubs, just to be safe, do not sell that gold either. Anything that is below the quick sell value or after a 10% cut, either their quick sell value or below the quick sell value, you do not want to sell it through the community market. I would rather you go ahead and just quick sell it. That way you don't have to waste time and you are getting the most efficient amount of stubs possible. Now, something else I want to let you all know, and this is in particular to launch. If you are getting high golds from packs and let's say they have diamond potential, those are the only golds that you do not want to sell off instantly but if you're getting let's say 80 overalls 81 overalls such as Nathan e. Ovaldi or JD Martinez that have a very uphill battle to go diamond then goats like that you do not want to hold on to and you want to sell instantly if they are selling for well above their quick sell value because you are going to be making a profit and as the cycle progresses meaning the games life cycle progresses the quick sell value or the value in the side of the community market of these gold cards they decrease heavily xander bogarts for example if you get him as a gold in the start of a year he is a gold that you want to hold on to because he has diamond potential and whenever he goes diamond his price should inflate but be very careful because there are some things to worry about when it comes to that point but i will discuss that on roster update predictions now let me save you a lot of pain and trauma do not buy packs mlb the show already does a great job of giving you a ton of free packs whether it's through conquest whether it's through showdown whether it's through moments whether it's through their inning programs whether it's through their daily moments program team affinity programs player programs whatever program they do have going on whatever game mode it already has an insane amount of free packs given to you so you going out of your way to spend stubs on packs without having a guarantee of getting a gold or a diamond especially in the beginning of the year where you want to have as much stubs as possible to build your team the best way you possibly can is going to be a waste of stubs you might get extremely lucky and pull mike trout and several other diamonds but the chances of each and every single one of you watching this video getting that lucky is high to none or i should say slim to none not high to none please do not get misinformed save the pack buying to the content creators because they're making content with it i don't want you to use your hard-earned cash to buy stubs and then end up wasting it on packs do not buy packs it is not recommended if you really like a diamond i would highly suggest either waiting towards later on in the game cycle where the community market stabilizes and then buying that diamond or i would just outright buy that diamond instead of trying to take a chance on a free pack when at the end of the day through doing conquest and other programs such as team affinity season one program you could get a ton of packs such as team affinity packs that give you the same opportunity but instead of you spending stubs you just have to grind and you get it for free another big piece of advice a mistake you don't want to make is opening up the starter diamond choice pack in the beginning especially if you do not know what you want to go ahead and pick out out of it because as soon as you open it you cannot back out you have to make the selection right there so something i always suggest is either wait till on youtube you have tier lists circulating of the best starter diamond choice packs which we will have on this channel to make you make sure you subscribe turn on the notifications and hit the like button on this video or a twitch streamer tells you the tier list or tells you which ones they believe are going to be the best which we also do stream 9 p.m eastern each and every single day except sundays on twitch everything is inside the description but when it comes to this my point of view is the starter diamond choice packs are only available to those that pre-ordered any deluxe edition so what i would do is i would go out of my way to stock up on these cards because they're gonna stop circulating inside the community market after let's say a week or two and mlb the show is not going to bring the cards back until later on in the game cycle so until those cards are within the horizon of coming back the prices will be heavily inflated and they might be needed for collections such as a 99 overall jackie robinson which was this year's collection but next year might be different but they might be
be needed for something like that. And if you're able to stock up on them and then sell them while they're heavily inflated, you're going to be making a ton of stubs. So whatever you do end up picking from this, I would highly suggest not selling it unless you are needing the stubs in order to complete a bigger collection. If that's the case, then yeah, sure. But most of the times, if you want to use these cards for as long as possible, do not collect them and do not sell them. Just go ahead wait until the tier list is out and select the best one enjoy it and then stock up on other from the same one and sell them once their prices are inflated because these packs won't be available for the wide majority of players once the game officially comes out april 5th when it comes to exchanges in the beginning of the game you don't really want to exchange anything because the prices of even commons are going to be so highly inflated you will make more stubs selling them individually than you would from exchange a bunch of them in order to get one bronze card so I would not do exchanges in the beginning of the game and if you're new an exchange is basically you put that player into a little formula and the formula after you put X amount of players to get X amount which here it's 2250 you get one player a singular player of the next higher tier so from common to bronze from bronzes to silver from silvers to a gold and it ends right there so in the beginning of the game cycle it's not really as effective when it becomes effective is near roster update prediction now i do not want you to make the mistake of not creating a ball player but creating a ball player this year is going to be a little bit different than last year because last year you could do a glitch and it could instantly level up or you could play with it in diamond dynasty and level it up this year it's only going to be leveled up the road to the show so it is a mandatory offline grind now a reason why i tell everyone a you want to be leveling up a ball player is because ball players have these programs within them for their archetypes that give you guys perks such as these diamond perks that you can then sell inside the community market they also go ahead and give you certain equipment that has diamond potential such as bats and many more as each item you see here has a diamond potential equipment that you can also sell in the community market another reason you want to create a ball player is because they are arguably the best player inside diamond dynasty because of the equipment you can put on them and the purse you can put on them you can go ahead and manage as you'd like to have the highest attributes possible within the first week of the game you could have what would be a 99 overall card within the first week of the game playing catcher behind the dish for you now the only downside is that it's only road to the show the way you will be able to upgrade these guys but that's perfectly fine with me if you did end up enjoying today's content like button red subscribe button don't forget to turn on the channel notifications and as always have a blessed day and night stay positive stay safe stay blessed and check out the description peace out deuces